previously, I made a video sharing some tips to make Webtoon creation easier. This time, I've discovered a few more things that can help streamline the process. When creating a Webtoon, we often use a large number of layers, and sometimes renaming them isn't enough to make them easily distinguishable. While you can use the shortcut Control-Shift-Click to find the layer you need, it can still be difficult to locate a specific layer when there are too many. That's why I usually use the Layer Color Palette feature combined with layer folders. I separate layers for backgrounds, characters, text, motion lines, and effects into different folders, each with a different layer color palette. Although Clip Studio has a Find Layer feature that allows you to search for layers by name, this requires you to remember the exact name of the layer you're looking for. For this reason, I prefer changing the folder layer color palette to help me quickly differentiate between layers. Next one is using filters. Sometimes we need extra editing in our artwork to enhance the dramatic effect of our webtoon. That's why we can take advantage of the filter features available in Clip Studio. Some of the filters I frequently use include Gaussian Blur, Motion Blur, and Retrofilm for flashback scenes. However, since webtoons consist of multiple layers, it's impractical to merge all layers just to apply a filter. The method I use is duplicating my color layers and merging them into one. After that, I select the panel where I want to apply the filter. For example, in a scene that requires motion blur, I apply the blur effect to the entire panel. Then, I erase the areas that are not the focus, ensuring the panel still looks visually appealing while effectively delivering the intended effect. Using Gradient Map. During the finishing process, I usually add gradients to enhance the visual effect. You can apply these gradients manually using the Gradient tool or by utilizing the Gradient Map feature. With the Gradient Map, you can instantly apply a variety of gradient presets and adjust the color percentage to suit your needs. This allows for more precise color control and adds a polished look to your webtoon. Using the Liquify tool, this feature is useful when your drawing is finished but still has some minor inaccuracies. Even if I notice a mistake early on, I prefer to make adjustments at the end since Liquify is easier to use once the artwork is complete. To do this, duplicate the layers of the panel that needs revision and merge them into a single raster layer. Then, use the Liquify tool to make final touch-ups and ensure the proportions look more polished. Creating custom stamps. You can create your own custom stamps to speed up your webtoon making process. Besides decorative effects like flower petals, I also create custom stamps for my webtoon characters' eyes, uniform logos, hair clips, and other recurring elements. You can even make your own custom stamp brush. Simply prepare a layer containing the item you want to turn into a custom stamp, then register it as a brush tip material. Duplicate an existing brush, Replace the brush tip with your custom stamp, and it's ready to use. This method helps maintain consistency and saves time when drawing repeated details. Using Auto Action Next is the Auto Action feature. There are several useful auto actions that I frequently use to speed up my webtoon creation process. You can find the Auto Action panel here. Let me show you an example. When coloring a character, I usually create separate folders for skin, clothing, and hair layers. Instead of doing this manually every time and renaming them from scratch, I record my actions and turn them into an auto action. With just one click, I can instantly repeat the same process without extra effort. There are also many auto actions available in the Clip Studio library that you can use Feel free to explore and take advantage of them to streamline your workflow. 
Another example is when I want to color small details created with a brush accessory asset. Instead of coloring them one by one, I use Auto Action to speed up and simplify the process. You can download the Auto Action asset that I use for this step, as shown in the video. Using Extract Lines, this feature is useful for several things, such as converting 3D objects into line art or extracting line art from photos. You can use Extract Lines to quickly generate line art from 3D objects in your webtoon, making the process much faster. This feature is also handy for manga creation, where you can import a photo, extract its lines, and turn it into a background by adding toning effects. Using the Convert Brightness to Opacity feature. This feature is useful for turning white areas into transparency. I often use it in several situations, such as when combining traditional and digital artwork. For example, if you want to integrate a hand-drawn sketch into your digital work, you can use this feature to quickly turn your scanned image into line art instead of redrawing everything from scratch. It's a great time-saving trick for creating line art efficiently. Using the Color Balance feature. I frequently use the Color Balance feature to adjust the colors of various effects. In addition to changing the hue and saturation to alter the colors of effects like flowers, I also rely on this feature. The color of effects is often adjusted to match the mood and situation of the scene, making sure the visual doesn't become monotonous. Even if you're using the same shapes repeatedly, changing the color can help keep things fresh and visually dynamic. Using the Tone feature. The Tone feature is great for quickly adding dot effects. You can use this feature when you want to add screen tones to the manga you're creating. In my case, I use this feature to add effects to the backgrounds I create, making it easier to differentiate them from the characters. This way, the background will have a dotted texture while the characters remain clean. I add this feature to my backgrounds simply to enhance the style and give them more visual depth. I think that's enough for this video, which is a continuation of the tips to improve efficiency in comic creation. I will include the link to the previous part of the video so that you guys will know. That's all. See you next time.